<laughs> okay, the time being nine o'clock, we'll call this meeting to order. Gracia, can you please call the roll? Michael Stark. Here. Ashley Stone. Ashley Stone. George Mika. Here. Lewis Carl. Here. And John Wiener. And Mr. Wiener asked to be excused. Three of the five members here being here, we do have a quorum. So we'll begin with the public hearing. Is there any public comment? Uh, actually, this is about something else. This is not about. Is there any public comment? One last time, is there any public comment? Um, could I get a motion, please, to close the public hearing? Mr. Carl makes a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Micah seconds. The public, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. The public hearing is closed. Uh, the next order is election of chairperson. Um, I'll take nominations for chair. I'll nominate George Mika the chair. What? Mr. Mika cannot be chair. He's chair of land conservation. You want to be the chair? Do you want to be the chair? Sure. Then I'll nominate. Okay, Mr. Micka nominates Lewis Carl for chair. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? If not, I'll take a motion to close nominations for chair. Okay, uh, Mr. Mecca, I made a motion for as for unanimous ballot for Mr. Carl to be chair. All in favor? Aye. Okay, Mr. Chairman, you are up. Are there any nominations for vice chair? I would uh, nominate uh, John Wiener. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll second. Well, you got to ask for three times. We're yeah. supposed to ask for three times. For any other nominations? Any other nominations? I make a motion that we uh, cast unanimous ballot for John Wiener as our vice chair. I'll second. Mike Stark. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Oh, motion carried. Public comments. Three minutes. Ken, you can go up to any chair and just reserve this. Okay. Okay. okay, got it. Okay, well, I'm, my name is Ken Kazoka and I live on Spider Lake. And um, I can't believe I'm asking the board this, but I'm asking you to tax us more. Uh, basically for the maintenance of the, of the, uh, of the, of the uh, Hudson Bay Dam. Now, statute 3138.38 allows Ashland County to special assess any property owner that benefits from a, from a dam. Well, that means you could special assess Spider Lake, property owners on Spider Lake, property owners on Muckwa Lake, on a river all the way up to the dam. So what this, what this accomplishes, Ashton County can retain ownership of the dam, but not have any of the financial responsibilities for the dam. The financial responsibilities would go back to the property owners on Spider, Muckwa, and the river. Um, 
And I see this as a, a good thing for Ashland County, because if, 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 this is, if, if there is not an owner for the dam, the DNR is gonna put it on the, the dam removal list. And if that dam is removed, our lake is ruined, our, our lake is destroyed, the, the, uh, the channel between the two lakes would be gone, it'd be a stream. The uh, Mukwa Lake would be a swamp and the, the beautiful river that goes down to the dam would be a stream. Um, so our property values would be destroyed. Um, and uh, the whole reason for buying the property on the lakes would be, would be negated. Now we have verbal agreement on easement to get to the dam for maintenance. So that should, that's not even gonna be a question anymore. That was a question for a while. And there is also grant money available that can you know, pay for about half of the money for the updates to the dam. And there are not many updates that are needed. There's some signage needed. There's uh, some cracks that need to be checked out by an engineering company. Um, that stop logs need to be replaced. And um, you know, this is stuff that could be done within the first year. And after that, there's not a whole lot that has to be done. There's a, in 2024, there's a uh, dam hazard analysis that has to be done. It's about $10,000. But other than that, the dam is in very good shape and there's very little liability in this dam because there's nothing past the dam. So um, I, would even, I would even say that we would provide dam management if you wanted us to, the people on Spider Lake, we would make the phone calls for the work to be done um, and do whatever needs to be done you know, to keep the dam in good shape. Um, so what we're asking you is to adopt the statute 31.38 uh, take ownership of the dam, keep ownership of the dam, and uh, keep this beautiful asset to Ashland County. Thank you. Any more public comments? Any more public comments? I forgot to mention one other thing. If you want to have a meeting with all our people that are coming like that be here July 2nd. If you want to have a meeting with all of our people from the lakes, uh, they're going to be July 2nd. We have the, the Clam Lake Community Club um, uh, held so that we could have a meeting if you wanted to see about, a, you know, who wants the, the uh, Lake District or who wants Ashton County to retain ownership. So that's available. Okay, next item is approval of agenda. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Approval of the zoning and land committee minutes for March 15, 2022. Do I have a motion? I wasn't on the. Yeah, I wasn't on it either. Is there a motion to table until the next meeting? We get the other people here. I'll make a motion, Mike Stark. I'll make a motion to table this to the next meeting. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Motion table till next meeting. Nine a.m. Okay, discussion on Hudson Bay Dam. <clears throat> okay, um, we had today uh, Eric Olsa from UW Extension uh, to talk about a lake district and what that means and how it affect, would affect the residents of Hudson Bay Dam. Morning, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So I was invited just to come and, and ideally answer questions about uh, lake districts in Wisconsin. Uh, I'm just gonna give a really quick overview, but I mostly want to respond to whatever questions you might have. Uh, about 50 years ago, the state of Wisconsin passed statutes that allow for the formation of lake districts. They are independent uh, local units of government 
that are set up primarily to take care of lake matters. Uh, they have really almost no regulatory power whatsoever, uh, especially not on their own. They can regulate outdoor recreation if they work with local governments that surround a lake. Um, their main purpose for uh, existing is in order to raise money to take on lake projects. So lake districts can raise money through the property tax levy and through charging special fees uh, to property owners. Um, and those monies have to be agreed upon by the people who show up at an annual meeting of a lake district. It's very much modeled in that regard on town uh, governments where uh, ideally in, some, in most cases, the town board and, and the town electors uh, agree on a budget for the coming year. Um, as a special purpose unit of local government, the Lake District is also regularly governed by a, a board, its own board, which is made up of uh, anywhere from three to five lo locally elected board members, as well as uh, an appointed member, one appointment coming from the county, usually through the Land and Water Conservation Committee, and then one appointment from the municipality in which the district exists, the town, typically in this case, it'd be a town. Um, they make up the governing body. They meet at least quarterly. Some Lake Districts will meet twice a month. Some Lake Districts will meet monthly uh, to manage the affairs of the Lake District, similar to the County Board. Um, they then prepare that annual budget that I mentioned, and then they have to announce a, an annual meeting. And at the annual meeting, the property owners and the residents of the district are eligible voters to decide on the budget. They have the opportunity to amend the budget at that meeting, uh, and then they vote on that budget, which basically is for the, for the next uh, calendar year or fiscal year. Um, Outside of that, again, there's not a whole lot of powers in the Lake District. Um, the gentleman earlier mentioned that the, it is also possible for a county to use special assessments. And that is that is accurate from my perspective that uh, there's, there's a couple of ways to get at the need for money. The reason why Lake Districts form is often because uh, maybe they, have a, they, don't, they don't have a county that's willing to make these types of special assessments. And oftentimes their projects are not as uh, specific as what, we're, what you're dealing with here with this dam, where it's, it's kind of a known in terms of what needs to be done um, and how much it might cost. Oftentimes lake districts take on bigger projects related to aquatic invasive species or watershed management, uh, where the, the costs, uh, it's, it's really difficult to predict. Um, so, I guess I, I really want to answer questions that you might have about Chapter 33 and about Lake District Law. So in a nutshell, what do you think is the biggest advantage to a Lake District? Um, well, compared to a Lake Association, it's just that there is a reliable source of funding. Um, outside of that, this direct participation in setting the levy is also seen as, as a pretty strong advantage. Uh, I should mention also that um, the, the Lake District law puts a cap on the levy of two and a half mils um, and also has a cap on how much you can raise through special charges. Uh, and so it's, it's rare that a, a Lake District could get out of control when it comes to raising money and spending money. Um, there are ways like, for example, if the, if the dam, and then this has happened elsewhere in Wisconsin, if the dam was extremely expensive, you can still finance things through the Lake District and spread out those costs over time. Another advantage, I guess, and, and something for the county to think of if you haven't yet, is that the state of Wisconsin through the Board of Commissioners of Public Lands offers uh, loans to local units of government, counties, cities, towns, Lake Districts. And for a Lake District that wants to finance something or a Lake Group that wants to finance something over multiple years, uh, because of the low, uh, requirements to participate in this loan program through the state of Wisconsin, many Lake Districts find that to be an, an advantage as well compared to a Lake Association where a nonprofit Lake Association would have to um, find a bank willing to, to lend them money and they would have to figure out how they're going to um, back up that loan. The state of Wisconsin, when, when lending money to local governments, 
has minimal requirements. And so I would say just the direct participation, the fact that um, people get, get that local say. At the same time, if it's a very, very small lake and a, and a small population, we find that it's difficult sometimes for the, the community around the lake to uh, generate the level of interest in governing the Lake District to fill, for example, all the elected positions. So even if there are only three elected positions from the property owners and residents, someone has to find those candidates um, and make sure people are willing to serve. By the same token, what are the disadvantages? Sure, so it's kind of the flip side of that coin. Um, the, the governance of the Lake District is, is like a microcosm, a very small version of the governance of a county or a town. Um, you have to meet reporting deadlines. You have to comply with open records law and open meetings law. You have to schedule and post your meetings in advance. People, someone needs to be on the ball to make sure these things happen. And so again, recruiting those citizens to fill positions, uh, even elected positions can be, can be challenging. Um, so I think that's, that's just one of the disadvantages is that it introduces a lot of bureaucracy into a process. Um, a, kind of a sub variation of that is that if you're an elected official in Wisconsin, uh, the state law requires you to be covered by some form of workers comp insurance. And so the Lake District right off the bat is gonna have to budget for, uh, even just for the board members to have uh, a basic workers comp um, program in place. The annual meeting that I mentioned where they vote on the tax levy has to be preceded by a, a physical mailing to every property owner within the district um, well in advance of the meeting so that people are notified of what's, what's going to be on the agenda. For a larger district, that can be expensive. So you can imagine down in southeast Wisconsin, we have a, a lake district that has well over a thousand properties on it. Uh, so every year they have to budget for and execute a mailing to over a thousand people to notice them um, of the upcoming annual meeting. So that, that could be seen as, um, you know, I'd like to argue that that's, an, that's a good thing because it keeps people informed, but if you're looking at it from a strictly budget perspective, that's an expense that has to be budgeted for and it comes out of the property owners themselves. Um, while it's a good thing that, that there's these appointed members from the county and from the town, uh, we also find that not always do those appointed members participate in the meetings. Do they know where the meeting's taking place or um, do, they, do they bother to show up? And they may feel, even though they're appointed from the county and they are a, a full governing member of the Lake District Board, they may feel that they're supposed to be there just sort of as an advisory person. That's not the case. Uh, the county and town appointees are full voting members of the board and as such, if they aren't present, they count against the quorum for the, the Lake District Board. Um, and they really ought to be a, a, a source of communication back and forth between the county and the Lake District, but we find that that's not always the case. I'd say also in most cases to form a Lake District, you do have to uh, petition property owners around the lake to get them to voluntarily sign on to a petition. You need at least 50% of the property owners around the lake to sign this petition. That process itself can be quite contentious. It can generate a lot of resentment in the community or concerns that this is all just about raising their property taxes. Um, and to make it through that process is, is a challenge. We have lake districts in Wisconsin that have only formed after several attempts to get the petition put together um, and, and in some cases spread out over decades. Any other questions? Yeah, I, I'd like to ask you a question. I, from reading about the Lake Districts, um, I also found that you have to insure the entire Lake District, which in our case would be our lake, the next lake over that goes to the, the river all the way up to the dam. and. Uh, I just wonder if you had any numbers of expenses for that type of insurance. Sure, and I guess I'd be careful. There's a whole chapter in our guide, People of the Lakes, that talks about insurance. What I mentioned earlier is that the board itself has to have associated with it a workers' compensation policy, which sounds kind of weird. Like, what, what are the risks involved in showing up at meetings? 
Um, but the state law on workers' comp is written in such a way that it defines employees as anyone in an elected, appointed, or paid position working with government. So that's, that's why I mentioned that. There is no requirement that property itself be insured. That's really up to every local unit of government to work with a um, insurance agent and find out what their risk is and, and what their exposure is and, and what sort of insurance they'd like to cover. Um, so if, if you don't own anything, then it's pretty hard to argue that you need a lot of insurance. There are lake districts that own things like a, a $250,000 aquatic plant harvester, which is a floating you know, piece of agricultural equipment, basically, uh, you'd wanna have insurance on that. And so whatever the insurance is on owning a piece of equipment like that is, is what the lake district would have to pay. Um, as far as owning a dam, I'm not a professional dam, uh, either insurance provider or uh, engineer. I think if, if, the, if there was really onerous insurance requirements on dams, we wouldn't have any dams in Wisconsin. They'd all be torn down by now. Something is worked out between local governments, the DNR, FEMA, uh, to, to extend coverage. And it's my understanding that so long as a owner of the dam is complying with orders provided by the DNR, which is basically the arm of the FEMA agency at the federal level, that, that that's why um, flood insurance is provided by the federal government because you're in compliance. Well, our dam is very low risk. And the last time Ashland County insured it, it was like $116 a year. So it was less than what it cost you to insure your car. But my question sure. is, the way I read that, the entire district for liability has to be insured. Not just the workman's comp, but the entire area for, for liability. I, that doesn't, that hasn't been an issue in other lakes. I'm not sure exactly what the, what chap, what sentence you're referring to, but um, there is no, in fact, when you're a local unit of government like, like Ashland County, um, there's a great deal of uh, law that's written to make sure that you're not subject to, to exposure on a number of things, right? Like if you want to run a county highway system, there's a lot of risk involved in that, but county governments um, are granted, I don't want to say immunity, but protection from uh, frivolous uh, lawsuits. Okay, and the other thing that I was reading in there that caught my eye was that you can sue, having a lake district, you can sue, you can also be sued. So, Correct. yeah, that's, a, that's what I read anyway. Some lake districts form, I want to say specifically to sue somebody, but people realize that if they want to defend what they have, sometimes they do have to go to court in order to do that. Uh, so there was a, a, a famous case in the last 10 years down in Southeast Wisconsin, uh, I think it was on Lake Como, where the, the Lake District itself was worried that the nearby village was going to lower lake levels because of their well pumping. And so they sued around that. There's a Lake District in Central Wisconsin, Pleasant Lake that has a similar lawsuit. Um, sometimes these suits are against the Wisconsin DNR. Um, in, in nearby Washburn County, there's a Lake District uh, just outside of Spooner that is concerned about a, a campground that the county is permitting um, on, on the lake. And so they are challenging the Board of Adjustment decision there. If you relied on just one person to somehow raise the money to, to fund these lawsuits, nobody would step up or be very uncommon. If you can use the Lake District as a, as a common source of funding for a lawsuit to defend everybody's interests, it, it, it makes a bit more sense. Um, and similarly, a lake district can be sued. Um, we find that doesn't happen very often, just like you know, it would, have, it would happen way less than Ashland County being sued or the town that the lake district is in being sued because it's usually proportional to what you have going on. What are you working on? Thank you very much. Any other questions for Eric? Any other questions? Thanks for attending. Thank, Thank you, you. And, and uh, staff there have my email. Uh, if there are follow-up questions and you wanna reach out to me, don't hesitate to do that. Um, I, I just end by thanking you all for, for doing uh, local government service. It's often uh, thankless. And I, I really know that you all are the types of folks that keep Wisconsin a good state. So thank you.
We also have Jake Druffner from the DNR on the line here. I don't know if he wants to add to anything Eric said, or if there's anything, the questions were asked, if he has any other different answers or wants to reinforce answers. Oh, yeah, I, I appreciate it. Can you hear me all? Yep. Yes, okay. we can. So I'm the dam safety and floodplain engineer out of Spooner, Wisconsin. Um, we regulate basically all dams on water courses under chapter 31. Um, we have quite a bit of history with the Hudson Bay Dam. Um, so if there are any questions regarding authorization or ownership or access or maintenance or operation, uh, you can feel free to reach out to me. At this time, we're kind of pending um, Ashland County's action as well as the Lake Group's action in terms of uh, gaining permanent easement or permanent access to the dam uh, that's considered the Hudson Bay Dam, currently located on the Uatala's property, um, impounding Spider and Muckle Lakes. Um, so, yep, we're just, just here to answer any questions you might have. And I appreciate Eric jumping on and explaining all about um, Lake Districts because I'm not privy or trained in that information. And I know that there's a a decent amount of lake districts that own dams within the state of Wisconsin. So if there are any questions regarding previous letters sent regarding Hudson Bay Dam or inspection reports, et cetera, feel free to reach out to me. Um, but again, we're kind of waiting on action from the lake group um, and the county in terms of easement and permanent access to the dam. Any questions for Jake? Any questions? Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Jake, for attending. Okay, Carisha did hand out some information to everybody uh, that was did not make the packet. Um, and this is some information that was sent to us from the DNR uh, about how they how they consider ownership of the dam. I have forwarded this to um, our one of the attorneys for WCA just to make sure th that they're in agreement. So that's kind of where we stand. So any more action? So any more any more comments? Any more comments on this? Any more comments? I have a comment. Uh, we've been going around with this thing for a long time, and uh, I, I think we. Uh, we need, obviously we need more information. I mean, you know, a year or two years ago when we started this, it sounded like it was a cut and dried thing. And now we know it's not a cut and dried thing. Dan, would you know offhand or, or don't administrator, who owns the Day Lake Dam? I, I don't, I, I do not know the answer to that. Um... Jake, do you have an easy way of looking that up? So is this the US Forest Service Day Lake Dam or the town of Gordon Day Dam? So the There's one on Highway Gordon 77. The Day Lake Dam. So Highway 77 is the uh, town of Gordon owned Day Dam. They call it Day Lake Dam is upstream owned by the US Forest Service. And the they also call the Day. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, the reason I mentioned that is oh, about 20 years ago, the uh, Forest Service came to us and wanted us to go from a 500 year floodplain to a 100 year floodplain. And the people just went, you know, odd. They says, hey, our insurances. So when I hear the insurance type, our insurances would triple and, and quadruple. And they will really harshly not to uh, go from a 500 year to a 100 year uh, flood plain. Now, on the Hudson Bay Dam, do we have a flood plain uh, series on it? Is it a 20? Is it a 100? Is it what? What is the flood plain on, on uh, the, you know, on the Hudson Bay Dam? I, I, I don't have a clue. 
And I think yeah. these are questions we need to have answered as to, you know, how come Town of Gordon owns a day lake dam? That's five, ten times larger than the Hudson Bay Dam. Do you want to comment? So I can try to answer some of those questions if it'd be helpful. Um, so the way we regulate large dams in the state of Wisconsin is through what we consider a dam failure analysis. Uh, the federal government, so U.S. Forest Service, uh, they do not have dam, they do have dam failure analyses, but they do not uh, require at the county level often that the um, dam failure analysis is actually adopted. So I probably need to explain what the dam failure analysis is, but it's essentially failing a dam within a model during a hundred year flow event. Um, and by failing it, assuming a certain type of breach or a certain type of failure, you can basically make a guesstimate to where that hydraulic shadow would end up downstream if the dam were to fail. That's based on how much water is being impounded and the height at which the dam fails. Um, that's what governs the zoning downstream of a dam, basically in terms of floodplain. Um, your, your average floodplain in any other location on a, um, on a lake or river is usually the FEMA 100 year floodplain. Uh, so this in combination, I actually think you might have it on the agenda today, but there's another, um, there's, a, there's a few other analyses or studies that are being adopted by Ashland County for similar dams, such as Fawn Lake Dam, and I believe Dead Horse Slough Dam, which are both in Ashland County. But essentially it's a way of zoning downstream of a, of a dam to ensure those that want to build uh, are not within that floodplain or within that hydraulic shadow if the dam were to fail. So the Forest Service dam, they operate um, in terms of a PMP or a PMF, which are um, probable maximum precipitation and probable maximum flow. Um, and that's based on a higher, they have a higher standard for their dams. Um, and again, that's the Forest Service dam <clears throat> upstream of Highway 77 versus the 77 Town of Gordon Dam, which is uh, operated as a large dam with a dam failure analysis also in place, but using 100 year flows rather than 500 year flows. Or the PMF is not necessarily a 500 year flow and the PMP is not necessarily a 500 year flow, um, but it's the highest uh, anticipated precipitation and flow that could occur um, at, at a dam. And that's, again, that's the federal not the uh, state standard. So I hope, hope that helps and I, I can answer any questions as well. Any other questions? Just as a point of interest, um, the Hudson Bay Dam, below the Hudson Bay Dam is about six miles to Mineral Lake and there are no homes, no structures, nothing. And matter of fact, Mineral Lake doesn't even have any structures on it. So. I think the liability problem where you're worried about flooding is very minor. Well, and I can agree with that, but have we, have you seen their agreement? I mean, if the town of Gordon owns that dam. No, no, I'm talking about the Hudson Bay Dam. Yeah. The, well, they have a lot of liability on the, on the, on Highway 77 because their home's below there. Well, yeah, it's a lot shorter distance between the dam and the lake versus where yours is, like you said, six miles. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing there. But you, you, it would still be something to go by if, if you want to start a lake association. And don't. I don't know if you do. I, I don't, don't think you do. You know, I, I feel being a farmer all my life, everything was on my back. And I'm thinking that dam's never going to go out. And I've told that to the town of Maringo the chance you know we're in this dilemma because it's a foot higher than it than a small dam and, well it, it really isn't as it turned out the way the dam was re, re done they had they redid it in 1970 and it, it isn't a foot higher anymore it's it is a little bit higher jake right but we can petition for up for that level yeah so a couple things here there's small dams and there's large dams a large dam is any dam that's has a structural height of over six feet 
and impounds 50 acre feet or more of water. So this dam impounds more than 50 acre feet of water and it has a structural height right now of greater than six feet. If you created a, um, a small dam, so you lowered the structural height, um, you would have to lower it a couple feet, but in turn, you know, likely water levels would also be reduced in order to um, incorporate a, a small dam instead of a large dam. So there's less requirements for a small dam than there is a large, but also that typically means your water level uh, may decrease at the, at the same time. So the Hudson Dam is a large dam? Yep. Yep. Well, we re reduce it by two feet, we're in trouble on Spider Lake and Mucklaw Lake for that matter. So that we can't have that. And we're willing to pay to do the work or the, you know, the analysis, you know, to, to make sure that the dam is in compliance. When you say we are, is that your committee or is that just personal people? Well, that's the people on Spider, Spider Lake, Mukwa Lake and the river. As long as, if, if you do the taxing. Right, so they got together, they have a district to all agree, it's in writing agreement or it's just a verbal? Agreement. Regarding what? Regarding the study and everything you're gonna you want to spend the money on. Well, we've been working on this for three years. And right, we that's were, why I'm new, that's why I'm- Okay, yeah, no problem. Trying we to... were willing to fund it ourselves, okay? We had pledges of over $35,000 to get it started for the maintenance of the dam. But, um, you know, the way it worked out, the DNR wrote a letter to Ashland County saying you own the dam. And that's right. what that's what got us to this point. And all, all we're trying to do is say, hey, we're willing to still pay for it through the taxation as long as you retain ownership of the dam. So it's a I I personally think it's a simple process and would not damn.